It's good to see all of you today and want to invite uh, Paul Glenn to come up and share for our personal ministries feature this morning. Good morning. It's a lovely Sabbath day, and I'm supposed to only take about five minutes, so I'll see if I can keep it under that. Um, This little light of mine, how can I let it shine? Um, I'm hoping that something that I say today will encourage all of us to let our light shine. Um, A quote that actually we just heard a few minutes ago, from Ellen White says, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with people as one who desired their good. He showed, he showed sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he invited them to follow him. I read a story this week about uh, this uh, salesman, and uh, he was selling insurance, and uh, uh, when he started out, he mainly just got acquainted with potential customers. He would take, take them out to golf or out to dinner, sometimes wouldn't even talk about the insurance that he was uh, uh, selling. Some of the other uh, salespeople wondered, well, what's this guy up to? But after a number of months, his sales started to come in. And that's kind of like mingling with the people. And, um, a successful pastor uh, felt that his church should be growing faster than it was, and he uh, had tried to make you know, everybody busy doing what he saw as being the way to win souls to the Lord, but somehow it just was not working as well as he sh- thought it should, and then he thought about it, and he said, you know, not everybody can do the same thing, but the Bible talks a lot about being kind, and... Uh, so he started promoting that the, all the members would be kind to all the people that they met. Planning to be kind, not just being kind, but, but putting it into your agenda that you're going to be kind. And he found that with the kindness that the members started showing, people saw that they were kind people. They were interested in coming to his church. They were interested in studying the Bible and becoming members, and this church started to grow many times faster than it had previously. A very successful evangelist I knew, um, unfortunately he has passed away now, but he uh, integrated a kindness crusade with every evangelistic crusade that he did. The Bible says, be kind one to another. Now I'm going to transition a little bit to talking about literature. Ellen White says, in a large degree through our publishing is to be accomplished the work of that other angel of Revelation 18 who comes down from heaven with power and great glory and who lightens the earth with his glory. Several ideas for distributing literature include taking part in the literature distribution days. Tridelphi has about once a month. And the special effort right now is uh, distributing the great controversy. Um, the Adventist Church hopes to, over the next couple of years or so, to distribute a, at least a billion copies. And um, that's a great goal. And it's interesting to think about the fact that some of the evangelists, uh, specifically the one I'm thinking about right now, is uh, Doug Batchelor. Uh, great controversy was was one of the main things that uh, uh, brought him to the Adventist Church, and then it was the kind people in the church that he came to that accepted him and encouraged him and uh, helped him want to be a member. Uh, actually, the person that gave him the great controversy to read was kind of a backslidden Adventist. Um, now, I, I just think it's interesting. Even God, God can use even a backslidden person to share his message. Our, and then, then there are the, t- the timid people that uh, have a hard time going up, knocking on doors, or, or even just going to the door and leaving a book. Um, 
and I think God can use timid people too. And one of the things my wife and I do is when we send, when we pay our credit card bills, we stick a, a couple of glow tracks in, one or two glow tracks. And I think that that can reach people too. Um, and we, uh, we at Tridelphia here do keep a nice selection of tracks and small booklets in our literature racks so that any member or visitor can pick up a piece of literature. And uh, do want members to know that we are want to encourage our members to, to pick out some whatever literature you need that you'd like to share and to read, to read and to share. Uh, we, we need to read the good things that uh, have been written in the Adventist uh, tracks and booklets too. Um, you know, if, if every one of us gave out a few, a few pieces of literature, just think how many more would go out. Somebody told me once that the pieces of literature, the books, uh, and so forth, are like light bulbs. And when the Holy Spirit power comes, that will be the electricity and, the, and, the, and there will be light. And so he said, we need to place um, literature in every, in every place we can. Um, a little quote from Mr. Rogers. There are three ways to ultimate success. The first way is to be kind. The second way is to be kind, and the third way is to be kind. And I really believe that if we as Christians are kind, we will draw people to Christ. And we also, a little quote from another favorite author of mine, you will be the same in five years as you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read. So the books you read yourself and the books that you share with somebody and they read it can be life-changing. So God bless us all as we try to let our light shine. Thank you, Paul. It is a blessing to have the printed word and printed materials to be a blessing in our lives and that we can share with others as well. Um, a few announcements to share with you. Um, one is that you're all invited for lunch today. Um, glad you came for the worship service, but following the, the service uh, downstairs, we'll be having our, our weekly fellowship lunch together. Also, next week, following the fellowship lunch, we will be having a farewell for the tailors. They have been here for many years and, um, and will be missed for, for many years to come as they transition to Michigan and his new responsibilities there at Andrews University. So we'll be having the farewell next week. And a few months ago, we had the farewell for the Klingbiles. And you'll see in the bulletin, this is the first reading of their transfer as they have settled in uh, at Germany and uh, they are transferring to the Hamburg Bergdorf Church. And so we'll take action on that uh, next week. Also, um, we need to keep in prayer the, the Ropka family. Uh, many of you are aware for the past number of months that Buzz Ropka has not been doing well, and he passed away on Thursday. And so we are wanting to, to remember the Ropka family as, as they grieve and, um, and anticipate the reunion at the resurrection. But we just pray that the comfort of the Spirit would be with them um, as, at this particular time. And it's a wonderful high Sabbath here with the uh, baptism of Gail Prince coming up. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the service, but welcome for all those who are here for this special occasion. We're glad to have you with us and join our church family as we welcome uh, a new member 
uh, to the Tridelphia Church and to the family of God. It's a, it's a wonderful time. And with that, we will continue on with our welcome and call to worship and prayer. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Welcome to church. We want to welcome you again to our church. We hope that you feel welcome, whether you are a longtime member or a new member, whether you are a longtime guest or a new guest, whether you are here in person or whether you are watching online. We want to send greetings to the Tomasini family in Brazil and the Heller family nearby or even Grandma Rue watching in Lincoln, Nebraska. You are welcome. And uh, as was mentioned, you're also welcome to stay for lunch. If you're watching online, I'm not sure you'll make it on time, but everyone is welcome. We will move to our call to worship which is found in Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Blessed the, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Please join us as we pray. Uh, you're welcome to kneel as you're able. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we are able to come here today and to celebrate um, your wonderfulness, your graciousness, your long-suffering, tender mercies with us, your great love that is like an ocean, and your glory that shines so bright and is so beautiful. Lord, thank you so much for the sunshine outside and for the trees. Thank you for the flowers that brighten up our lives. Thank you for each other and for family. Lord, you give us so many wonderful gifts. Lord, um, I'm so thankful, as I said, that we're here today to worship together. We also are so sad because there are some people who are not here because of sickness, because of grief. Lord, we think of the Robka family and Lord, our hearts mourn with them. We are so sad. Buzz was such a, a great part of this church. He has such a strong legacy, and we all will miss him so much. And Lord, I pray for others who are grieving, for others who are heavy laden and burdened. Lord, I pray that you will lift up their burdens and give them a special Sabbath blessing. And we once again uh, invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to be with us in this service today. Thank you uh, for the, the wonderful thing that's going to happen with Gail's baptism. Thank you for the testimony that, that we will see with um, this uh, symbolism. And, and thank you for those that can join and support her. We pray for a special blessing of healing on her husband as well. And uh, may we have a sense that uh, each of us participating and being here today is part of your grand plan. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
I invite you all to stand up and to sing about the blessed assurance we have in Jesus, number 462. Good morning, church family. This is a high Sabbath, amen? It's a day in which we can rejoice in seeing what God is doing for each one of his children. And today we have the privilege of witnessing a baptism. And at this moment, I would like to invite Gail Prince to come up. We have been studying with Gail for several months and we've been learning a lot and growing a lot and sharing a lot and I know this is a, a very very special day for her and for our church family amen? amen and today I've invited Pastor Joe Reeves um, to share the vows with her. We're going to do a shortened version and I'll let him explain. Jesus says that whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. Amen. And so our faith is, is built today, Gail, as we see you take this uh, special step 
in uh, making this confession of your faith and confidence and trust in Jesus. And we know that you have been uh, studying with uh, friends and preparing for this special day. And Seventh-day Adventist Church has a, a fairly comprehensive set of baptismal vows. And those are on the back of your baptismal certificate, which summarizes things that you have been preparing for uh, in, in, in preparation for this step today. And so as I read these uh, this, uh, three questions, which is a summary, uh, these can be questions for all of us, uh, Gail first, and the rest of us as well. You can renew your own baptismal commitment today as we witness Gail taking the, this step. So I have three questions for you, and you can, you can answer yes or no to these three questions. Today, do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, and do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Yes. Congregation? Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the Statement of Fundamental Beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Yes. In congregation? Amen. Amen. And lastly, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes, and offerings, and a life of service? Yes. In congregation? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've also asked Gail if she would share with us her testimony as to why she's making this decision today. And I've also asked some of her friends. In fact, I see several of them here. I'm going to ask Jan, who's back there. I know she's waiting for some other guests, if she could come. Joyce, I saw you today. There she is. You can come up front if you want. Carolyn, also come. And Gerhardt, please come here to the front. And the reason why is they have an awesome group that meets every Tuesday. Should I say where? <laughs> and Heidi. Where's Heidi, Heidi? I know she's back there somewhere, or maybe up front. Um, and Heidi, we, we all get together at a place, and Linda too, called Lido's. Anybody heard of Lido's? <laughs> all right. So that's where we get together. And, and this is where I had the beautiful opportunity of meeting Gail. So Gail, share with us. Should I use this? No. Yes. I don't need, do I need? You can use this one. Here you go. Okay. That one's better. Good morning. Good morning. Oh boy, that's <laughs> loud. <laughs> this all began from an invitation to lunch from Roxanne. <laughs> she says you're going to have fun and laughter if you come and meet my ladies. Yep. So it ended up, so I met Joyce, Jan, Linda, Peggy, Carolyn, and Gearheart. And Heidi. So, and Heidi. And Becky. But, and Becky. <laughs> Gearheart, not one of the ladies, but I met him too. And also Pastor Sam. We had some guests once in a while. But sharing lunch with them, it was so meaningful because I began to know them and enjoy, it was their religion, and I enjoyed it so much, I wanted to hear more. So I decided to visit Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. And it was such a wonderful experience. I gained so much knowledge of things I didn't know before. I was baptized as an infant in another religion. But that was chosen for me. Amen. Now I'm choosing this, I'm choosing this church and following the Bible. Amen. I've learned so much already, and I intend to learn more. Amen. So I thank you all for welcoming me into this church. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Roxanne, do you want to share something on behalf of our Lido's group? <laughs> I could be up here all day. <laughs> I could just say, you know, it's been 19 years last weekend that Len and I were baptized in this church. So praise the Lord for that. 
<clears throat> and it, it is a family here. It's unlike any other place I've ever been. And I just want to thank every one of you for being so welcoming and loving and supporting of Gail, too. It's been great. But our Lido's group has really been a blessing. We minister to those that serve us. We minister to those that come in. <clears throat> and we've always been there for each other. We've been there for Jan when she lost Berlin. We were there for Joyce when she lost Lloyd. And we were there for Linda when she lost Carl. And Lee Schroeder, we were there for her when she lost Jim. But we have gained so much. And I'm just thankful for all the ladies that we have there and, and for our ministry. It really is a ministry. And I just thank each one of you. Thank you, family, for coming today and for the neighbors. We just, we really love you and thank you for supporting Gail and Chris, especially during this time. Thank you. At this moment, we're going to proceed with our baptism. And I just want to share with the congregation what our fundamentals of faith say regarding baptism. It says, by baptism, we confess our faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and testify of our death to sin and our purpose to walk in newness of life. Thus, we acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior, become his people, and are received as members by his church. Baptism is a symbol of our union with Christ, the forgiveness of our sins, and our reception of the Holy Spirit. It is by immersion in water and is contingent on an affirmation of faith in Jesus and evidence of repentance of sin. It follows instruction in the Holy Scriptures and acceptance of their teachings. Who would like to move that we accept Gail Prince as a member of the Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church? Is there a second? I saw a lot of hands go up. All in favor say amen. amen. Those opposed say no. <laughs> it is carried. And I'm going to invite the Kim family to come up and they're going to be singing with the congregation as we prepare for the baptism. I forgot to say one more thing. <laughs> Thank you, Donna Rapp. I know you're watching today. We miss you and we love you and we were here to support you too. Thank you. Morning, church. You're going to open to page 499. This is Gail's favorite hymn. Uh, our family is going to sing verses 1 and 2. We want to encourage you to sing verses th verse 3 with us.
to be able to witness the decision that Gail has made to follow Jesus. Amen. And so as a minister of the gospel, Father, we thank you for Gail's decision to be a disciple of Jesus. We thank you for her witness today. And we thank you for her love for you and love for others who see you shining through her. And Father, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the plans that you have for Gail. And again, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be present as we baptize her in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And these are decisions that can still be made today. Amen? Amen. There are many who still don't know about Jesus, but you and I have the privilege of sharing his love wherever we go. And so what a privilege to have Gail as part of our church family. I know God has plans for you, Gail. And you'll be a witness wherever you go. Thank you. of you remember the day when you went into the waters of baptism. Good, good. Praise the Lord. And if you haven't had that experience, please talk to, to Pastor Sam. That can, that can be yours as well. The offering today goes, the loose offering goes for Chesapeake Advance. That is not to restore the Chesapeake Bay. As, as good as that cause is, Chesapeake Advance, we are part of the Chesapeake Conference and part of the Sisterhood of Churches, about 100 churches in Maryland and Delaware, uh, predominantly a few counties in West Virginia and Virginia. But the Chesapeake Advance helps those churches um, in, an, in a number of ways. One is that here we are uh, 50 years in. We are celebrating this year the 50th anniversary of the Tridelphia Church. 
And that's a wonderful thing. And we have been blessed for many years to have this place of worship. There are many new churches, church plants, new churches that are starting out that are doing what Tridelphia had to do in its earliest days and either meet at people's homes or rent from wherever they could find a place to rent on Sabbath morning. And they are working trying to build their own church or buy their church a place where they can worship and, and have a church home. And Chesapeake Advance helps those new fledgling congregations be able to, to build a church or perhaps build a school if they're trying to start up a, an Adventist school. And uh, it also goes to help uh, students receive an Adventist education. There are many students that want an Adventist education, but it's simply unaffordable for them as a family, and they need some help in order to, to make that happen. And so this, this provides some extra assistance to, to make that happen. So I just want to encourage you in your faithfulness with um, Chesapeake Advance, uh, specifically as, as part of our, our larger church family in this region. There are seven T's in stewardship. Now, not in the word stewardship, <laughs> but in the concept of, of stewardship. Um, one is time, the stewardship of our time. How do we use the, the time that God has given to us day by day throughout our life? Two is temple, the, the body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. How do we care for and steward uh, the care for our bodies? Our talents, the, the, the gifts that God has given to us to be used in service and ministry to other people. Our treasure, uh, specifically the, the, the financial resources that God has blessed us with. How do we steward those in a way to, that they are for God's glory? Um, our trust, what do we place our trust and our confidence in? When we play, face especially difficult times, do we, do we place our trust in God? Our theology. Do we embrace and share all of the teachings of Jesus in our lives and with others? And that would be the seventh one, our testimony. What is our, our testimony that we share with other people? Uh, we're told that each Christian is a portrait of Jesus Christ. And it's a sobering thought to think if you are the, the only portrait of Jesus that other people saw, what would that look like? But we are always a, a living testimony by our words and actions of Jesus. And so we're called to a life of, of, of whole stewardship. And the deacons will receive our tithes and our offerings. And let's have a word of prayer as they prepare to do that. Dear Lord, we are grateful for every blessing that you give to us. May we use them to give honor and glory to you, to enlarge your kingdom, to share our testimony of your goodness. Lord, we pray that the tithes and the offerings that are returned today would go towards their intended purpose, that they would be blessed by you, and that there are many, many people who would be blessed as a result. In Jesus' name, amen.
and take part in the service. They will receive the children's offering, which goes to, to help students in Adventist education. And then when they are finished with that, come back up and Mildred Weiss will have a story for you. sing together number 218 while the children church and it's one of the best parties for church ever okay and it's something that shows us that Miss Gail loves Jesus right do you like to go on vacation yeah especially now that the, the summer is coming it's nice to go on vacation you know there is a hotel in New York City and that's the hotel in New York City. Some people might know that hotel. It's called the Plaza Hotel. And it's a very high-end hotel. A lot of yes. very important people go there. Let's see the next one, if we can. <laughs> the next picture. OK, what do you see in the front of the hotel? Flags? Do you know some of those flags? Yes. Okay. Yeah, America. And we have one here too, right? Here. A church. What else? Do you know those? Italy? Yeah. What else? Israel. Right. Wow. That's great. And you know why they put those flags there? Hmm. I will tell you why. <laughs> they are not always the same flags there. They change the flags because when the president or some very important diplomat goes and stays in that hotel, they put the flags of that nation that they represent. It's a representation, like, for example, something that remembers me or us, where are we from? Okay? And you know what? I have something here, and let's see if we can. Okay, do you know what this flag is from? Oh, let's see the rest of the church too. 
It's not only for Peru. Yeah, Peru. Okay, Peru. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, this one. <laughs> That's Chile. Woo. I can see where people is from, okay? Okay, let's see this one. Okay, this one here. Oh, Switzerland. Yeah, Switzerland. Well, yeah, that's a shirt, but... Oh, this one, I think you will know this one. Whoop! Oh, Brazil, right, Brazil. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see this one. Whoop! Ah! <laughs> Canada, right, Canada. Well, you see, I lived in Canada. That's why it's big. <laughs> okay, let's see one more here. Oh, I have two more. Okay, let's see this one. Uruguay, Uruguay, yeah, that's my country, come on, <laughs> this is my country, Uruguay, okay, okay, and now, yeah, many people will know this, because we were champion, woo, <laughs> Argentina, yeah, yeah, well, you, you can put it back if you want, okay, so, Everybody just jump when you know where the flags are from, right? And for example, we know that one over there is from the uh, America. And this one, you know what that flag is for? Just beside Pastor Pastam? Christian, yeah, Christianity, right? It's the flag of the Christian. The Christians have a flag as well. You know what? Jesus says that we can show, not with a flag, with something else, who we belong to. And it's not a flag. It's something that we do. Yes, something that we do. And that's, we can find that in let me, uh, John 13, 35. And we can put that in the thing as well over there. Okay. And it says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So what, what is the flag that Jesus wants us to, to show everybody? What's the flag? Love. Can we learn that with signs? I will show you. It says,
this hymn is about a day of hope with this Sabbath. It's from the hymnal in Portuguese. And you can get along with the lyrics. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this moment, we would like to invite Gail once again to come up and share something that we are, we want to share with her, something that we have as a church. And I would like to also invite Eunice to come up. Yes, yeah, she's our head deaconess, and she's going to be giving her something very beautiful. And I want to invite Joyce. 
Where are you, Joyce? There she is, and she's going to share something on behalf of our church family. This is a special weekend, amen? It's called Memorial Day Weekend. And we honor those who have served our country, our nation, and paid the ultimate price. And a few days from now, Gail, it's going to be your birthday. Oh. <laughs> yes. It's going to be your birthday. And today's your birthday, too, in many ways. So Joyce has something that she wants to share with us. Yes, come on up. A beautiful poem that she made for this special occasion. Well, you also have to be patient with me while I turn pages. It isn't pages long, it's just a few pages. <laughs> and I also want you to know, I was baptized in this church in 75, 1975, when there were just no, there was no roof, just the beams up here. So anyway, that's just an aside. <laughs> anyway, this is entitled A Special Memorial Day a day of remembrance. On this very special day, on this very special Sabbath, as we gather here to celebrate, may each one of us now remember our own special date from a long time ago, or maybe a short time for some. However long it was, twas a challenge we each won. Now, Gail, as you've made this decision for yourself, to be baptized by immersion as Jesus was himself. Always remember that he showed you the way to bury your old life by giving you a new life today. The beauty of this moment, remember always in your heart. The love you've had for Jesus was evident from the start. And to your family and friends, especially now to Chris, may God's blessings be with each of you. Tis truly our wish. Gail, as you've opened your heart to God's will, spend time in his word and your life will be filled. As we've watched through this moment, we're ever so proud of the stand you have taken before this crowd. Your friends, Gail, have watched as this journey you've begun. Our prayers were with you and today our hope has won. Your love for Jesus has shown out through your will. If you always allow him, he will lead you on still. Each day he'll be with you as you turn to him in prayer. The journey gets tough at times, but never doubt his love or care. And now that you've risen up from that watery grave, remember your life for his, he was willing to save. God bless you and keep you with each passing day. For you proved your love by Jesus, by choosing to obey. May your family be blessed by the faith they have seen. God gives us the choice, but always on him lean. <laughs> now, Gail, as you come to the end of this rite, may you cherish each moment and hang on to it tight. And though questions will arise in the weeks ahead, always look in God's word to learn what he said. The Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. I'm going to give Eunice something here to share with Gail. Yes. And we have a little gift here as well. And some of us may be watching this and saying, wow, how beautiful and how, how easy this is. But this week, I know for Gail, was a very difficult week. On Sunday, her husband, Chris, who wanted to be here, went to the hospital. And he's still in the hospital. 
But he said, under no circumstance do you miss this day. Under no circumstance. And I know that Chris um, is rejoicing and knowing that you made this decision, Gail. And we, your church family, rejoice as well. And I know that heaven is rejoicing at this moment and knowing that you've made your decision to follow Jesus. Amen. Okay, ready. <clears throat> Our Sabbath thought today. The Bible does not teach that the sinner must repent before he can heed the invitation of Christ. Come unto me, all ye that, are, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, verse 28. <clears throat> it is a virtue that goes forth from Christ that leads to genuine repentance. We can no more repent without the Spirit of Christ to awaken the conscience than we can be pardoned without Christ. Ellen G. White, Steps to Christ, page 26. And Abigail will have our scripture reading today. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Grant, these, grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that, I'm, that I am baptized with? Then they said to him, We are able. That's found in Matthew 20, 20 to 22. Thank you, Joyce, for the beautiful poem. Thank you, Burdick family, for your participation this morning. Elder Rammers, Susan, Mildred, thank you so much for making this Sabbath so special. Ariel, Emmanuel, we've been blessed already, amen? amen? Already blessed by all that God has done through each one of you. And today... We have the beautiful, or we had the beautiful opportunity of witnessing Gail give her life to Jesus and to promise before witnesses and before God her desire to be a disciple of Jesus. This weekend, Memorial Day weekend, where we honor those who gave their life for this nation, for our nation, and for mankind, so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have in this country. We, we can hardly imagine the decisions that were made by men and women as they went off to war, to defend the things that they valued most, the people that they valued most. And today we also want to honor someone who is no longer with us, Buzz Ropka, who also served our nation and also was a part of our church family and who, through his contagious smile, made everyone around him feel great. Amen? Amen. He was a Sabbath school teacher. He helped us with ACS during our 4th of July parades. Helped us also at the Howard County Fair. And anyone who met him 
caught his smile and couldn't help but smile back at him. And I know that many of you shared beautiful memories in connecting with Brother Buzz and seeing him be a witness wherever he went. In fact, a lot of us saw him be a witness in the hospital when he wasn't feeling well, when he was having to deal with his illness. Every person that walked into that room, they saw Jesus. Amen? They felt his presence there. And so today I would like to share with you what true greatness is really all about. Is it about having high positions or high degrees or a large bank account or something called power? What makes a person great? Jesus shared with his disciples what it means to be a part of his kingdoms and the principles that are seen in the kingdom of heaven. And in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16, we find a parable speaking about a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labors for his vineyard. And you can see the landowner being Jesus. And he went out to call people to work in his vineyard, to go out and tell others about his amazing love and mercy and grace. And the parable tells us, or Jesus told this parable, in saying that he went out early in the morning. I haven't seen this here in Maryland, but if you go to California and you go to any Lowe's or Home Depot early in the morning, you'll see a group of guys in the parking lot watching who goes in and out of the store. And they're there waiting for someone to just come up to them and ask them to work. They work for an hourly wage. They work for a daily wage. And trucks and cars come up to them and you can see them all gathering close to see if they're going to be the one taken for the job. And when I've been there and I've noticed them, I've seen them, Pick one or two out of the big crowd. And this goes on for minutes, hours, until about 10 a.m. By 10, if they have not been picked up by anybody, they just go back home and wait till the next day. Jesus told the parable of a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And when he found them at 6 a.m., they agreed on a day's wages, a denarius, which was the wage for a day. And he sent them into his vineyard. And then he came at 9, and then he came at 12, and then he came at 3, and he continued hiring laborers to go out into his vineyard. The day ended at 6 p.m., and at 5 p.m., the landowner went out again to hire someone to work in his vineyard and told them that he would pay them a fair wage. The moment came when they had to go back home and they were going to get paid. And the landowner started by the last person who had come, the person who just worked for one hour and they were paid a full day's wages. They were paid as if they had worked for 12 long hours under the sun. And so he went with the one at 3 p.m., the one at 12 p.m., and he paid each one of them a whole day's wages. 
when the first ones that had started off at 6 a.m. received their wage, they noticed it was only for a day's wage. And they were a little upset. In fact, they complained to the landowner and said, hey, we've been here all day long and we received the same as the person who only worked for one hour. Jesus tells us that the landowner said to them, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? Was the landowner right in giving whatever he wanted to the person who had worked the most as well as the person who had worked the least? Yes! Yes! He gave them a day's wages. Is God gracious with us, brothers and sisters? For those who have been in the church for a long time, as well as for those who have recently joined the church, is he gracious with all of us? He's merciful. And what Jesus is really saying is that there is greatness in service. There's greatness in doing things for others because Jesus came to serve us. Amen? Amen. When I was a kid, my mom had free labor. Some of you know what that means. No wages. No, I found out I was getting paid very well. I didn't have to pay for a room in my house. I didn't have to pay for my clothes. I didn't have to pay for my food. So my mom had me working outside, pulling weeds, big weeds, tall weeds. And if I ducked, I could hide in those weeds. In fact, we had half an acre of weeds. And my mom would tell me, go out there and take care of those weeds. I had to also wash dishes at home. I had to do my room. I had to clean it up, help with the house chores, water the plants. I mean, my mom had a big list of things for me to do. (laughs) And looking back, best times, yes. Great training. Because I find out Today that I still have to wash the dishes, I still have to weed, I still have to take care of the lawn, I still have to do all these things. Amen? (laughs) So good training, good training. And I think my mom noticed that those weeds were not going anywhere. I mean, the more weeds I pulled, the more weeds came up. And one day she did something incredible. I have no idea how she found out about this person, but a person I'd never seen before came to the house. Three days later, I see him out there in this piece of land with lots of weeds, where the weeds had gotten so tough because the land was so dry that it was impossible to pull out. And he had a pair of oxen and started to plow that land. And I started to see these big chunks of earth just turning, and the weeds were just falling to the side, and the roots were just coming out. And it made life so much easier, amen? (laughs) I could pull those weeds weeds out and the... Um, root system out and, and it was like easy to do now how much my mom paid him I have no idea but I was so happy for his service amen and this week I also had the opportunity of, of going to someone's graduation and as I was looking to all the graduates go up and share their appreciation for their parents for what they have done, for the sacrifices in time, in money, resources. I saw 
I would say more joy in the parents than the students, yes? The parents are just like glowing. The students were like, okay, I still have four more years to go. <laughs> but there is joy in service, amen? There is greatness in service. And Jesus' disciples had not yet understood this. In fact, two of the disciples had asked, probably, Mom, talk with Jesus, and he might be able to give us a good position in his kingdom. And Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Jesus didn't only come to serve, did he? He came to die. He came to give his life for us. And Jesus was speaking to this mother and speaking to his disciples, are you able to do this? Are you able to go the full length of the mission and give your life for this cause? And they said, we are able. And Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. The other disciples heard about Jesus. They heard about this conversation he had had with the mother and the two sons. And they were upset. They're like, how dare these guys go in front of us? So Jesus called them to himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Those in high positions, they rule over them. They exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so with you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Not a popular position. Not a great position in the eyes of human beings. But in the kingdom of heaven, this is the greatest position because it's a position of service, a position of humility, a position where we give what we have received. Amen? Amen. Where we're able to share what God has given us. And I want to ask here the question, where do we find the most joy? Really, where do you find the most joy? When you receive something or when you give something? When you give, when you serve, when you go the extra mile and see someone smile, you find joy. You find what it means to be great. And Jesus said, as the Son of Man did, not come to be served, but to serve. And he came to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus was sharing this with his disciples in the city of Jericho, right before going up to Jerusalem to give his life for many. Jesus was sharing with his disciples True greatness comes in serving one another, in loving one another. As we heard, in being kind 
to one another. And to prove this point, Jesus, as he was walking out of the city of Jericho, saw two men sitting on the side. They were right on the side of the road, just sitting down. They were not there because they needed a job. They were not there because they didn't have anything else to do. But they were there waiting for, they were there waiting for Jesus. They had heard about Jesus. They had never seen him, but they had heard about him. In fact, the Bible tells us that they were two blind men sitting on the side of the road. And when they heard the crowd, the big crowd, they knew who was coming. Jesus was coming. And when Jesus got closer, they said, this is our opportunity. And the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 20, verse 30, that when Jesus was passing by, they cried out, cried out saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Have mercy on us, O King of Jerusalem. Have mercy on us, O King of the universe. And the crowd started to say, be quiet, be silent. Leave Jesus alone. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said the following, What do you want me to do? For you. What do you want me to do for you? Do you hear Jesus asking you that question this morning? What do you want me to do for you? Same question. Jesus did not come asking for us to do something for him. He came saying, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes be opened. Do we need our eyes open today? Do we need to see his amazing love for you? Do we need to see Jesus? The Bible tells us Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. And immediately, their eyes received sight and they followed him. Have you seen Jesus? If we have, we're following him, amen? And if we're following him, we're working in his vineyard, amen? And if we're working in his vineyard, we know that the reward will be good, amen? My reward was good coming back home after pulling those weeds. I had a beautiful room where I could sleep. I had food to eat. And Jesus says that he's coming back, amen? And in his father's house are many mansions, many rooms, and there's great food, amen? And we can all be a part of that kingdom. All of us can be. If we let Jesus into our heart, he wants to do something for you. I don't know what that is, but he's able to do it because he has great power. He has great authority. But above all, he has great compassion and love for each one of you. Amen. Amen. At this moment, we're going to sing our final hymn, and I invite the congregation to stand.
And I'll invite Ninda to come up and share with us the hymn that we're going to sing at this moment. Let's stand and sing hymn number 314, 314, Just As I Am. Dear Heavenly Father, what a privilege to be able to come to you. Some of us are blind. Some of us can't hear. Some of us have a hard time obeying. But we thank you that you have compassion over each one of us. And Father, today we are grateful to know that you still invite us to come. And we thank you for Gail's decision to follow you. We ask your blessing upon her and her family. In a special way, we pray for Chris, who's in the hospital. We ask for healing. We ask for your will to be done in his life. And Father, as a church family and as guests this morning, we thank you. We thank you for inviting us to be a part of the work in your vineyard. And we ask, Father, that as we leave this place, that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we will be able to share with others the good news of Jesus and his love for each one of his children. We thank you for hearing our prayers, and we ask your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.